Hello friends, we are in the course Carbon Accounting and Sustainable Designs in Product Life Second Management and in this week I am discussing about Carbon Accounting model that is quantitative model. I gave you introduction to the Carbon Accounting model and I talked about different layers of a workshop facility and we talked about the facility umbrella, the product layer and part layer now we are talking about. In the last lecture I talked about the part layer and now I will talk further about the part layer and the equipment carbon emissions direct and indirect in this lecture. In the quantitative model we started from here that is the total carbon emissions in a workshop is sum of the carbon emissions from the product and other miscellaneous emissions. It is not miscellaneous, it is a, those are also the important part of the production system that is distribution, inventory, auxiliary and medium of working. That is it could be compressed here, it could be nitrogen, it could be water operated, any way other than electricity which are those, those were covered here. And then we talked about the carbon emission due to product that was in the product layer. Carbon emissions from the product, from the product I it constituted of part and the assembly. Assembly we explained it here itself, then we talked about the part, carbon emissions from the part, those are A here, that is part from 1 to P. P is the number of processing steps, that is process 1, process 2 up to P number of processes. So, what is the carbon emission due to equipment? when the equipment is working that is in production that is equipment underscore P plus equipment when it is waiting and equipment when it is transferring from one process to other. This we had a discussion in the last week. Now in this lecture I will talk in detail about this part that is carbon emission for the ith process execution that is when it is actual working. So, to put that in a quantitative form, this carbon emission from equipment when it is being executed, the process is being executed could be divided into two major components that is carbon emission from the equipment when it is direct plus carbon emissions from the equipment when it is indirect. So, these direct carbon emissions we already discussed, indirect we already discussed, indirect we will put it in more detail. So, this becomes carbon emissions in the equipment from the equipment direct plus indirect have three major components. It is carbon emission due to energy, E air is energy plus carbon emissions due to material consumption that is material emission. Then we have carbon emission from the waste treatment C E W. Here C E equipment underscore P this you already know is carbon emission from C E from manufacturing equipment and when I talk about the equipment direct, this is carbon emission which are direct. Direct from the equipment or other one is the carbon emission from the equipment that is indirect in which the three components are carbon emission E, carbon emission MC that is material consumption and carbon emission W that is waste treatment. So, these all are carbon emission from energy. That is energy consumption 
or by power consumption in the production process. So, this is during the production process when the power consumption is there, this is carbon emission because of that. And for the material consumption also the carbon consumption is there, I will put it at carbon emission from the material consumption, this W is carbon emission from the waste treatment. This waste treatment could be debris or waste liquid or waste sand etcetera. From the material if I talk to talk about material could be carbon emissions that are generated during the preparation of the process of the raw materials or auxiliary materials that could be primary or secondary energy anything because we are not talking about the indirect energy we will consider it secondary energy as well. One thing I will also like to put here that whenever we are talking about the sustainable designs because now I am talking about the indirect as three of its components that is energy, material and waste. So, sustainable designs majorly work in these three directions that is from energy viewpoint, from material viewpoint and from call it waste treatment or pollution mitigation whatever steps we take. So, present product whatever status it is if we are trying to reduce the energy consumption that we say is a sustainable design than the previous one or if you are trying to use the energy or can take the energy from the renewable sources or some part of the energy is taking from the renewable sources. So, that is also a sustainable design. On the other hand the material that is being used here in the development of the product or a part of a product that if is a biodegradable material or if it is a bit material that is recycled material that also is a step forward to the sustainable design. And third part is waste here that is when we are trying to reduce the waste, reduce the waste or we are trying to completely take off the waste for example, in additive manufacturing there is no waste of material. In uh, forging material scrap is not there, in casting yes some scrap is there, but in machining conventional machining or in the CNC machining which is cutting processes lot of scrap is there. I will show you a video in the end of this lecture, we will you observe the scrap coming out of the material when we try to machine it. So, in all these three directions whatever we try to take as a focus of our study, so we can move towards a sustainable design. So, in these as well we try to then focus upon whether we are trying to use the material or focus our area as I talked about this in one of the previous lectures that is are we talking about before use, during use or after use. For instance, if it is there a material before use, use is when a customer or the final user is actually using the material or using the product. For example, if it is a car, the car is manufactured by a manufacturer that is a before use part. And when the consumer is driving the car that is during use pass and after the use after the 15 years of the working life of the car, it is sent for dismantling or it is disp for disposal that is after use. So, here as well during use itself we can try to work in the directions that whether we are going to have negative 0 or positive impact. So, negative here means uh, you have reduced the material consumption, Pos 0 means no change in the material is there. Positive means when you have increased the material consumption, but this is traded off while reducing the waste later on the other hand. So, this trade off is always there. So, here in this lecture we are focusing on the before use part only, before use part that is in before use also you know the PLM certain parts are there that is product design, then we have process design, then we have production 
and distribution. So, this is what we are focusing in this lecture. And this is due to energy, carbon emission due to material consumption, carbon emission due to waste treatment. These are all indirect treatments that we are talking here. Now, here different types of processes are there which have different types of equipment, types of its material, types of the waste that they produce and the realization of a machining process or any assembly process is relatively simple which is generally completed by one device or, or operator. And on the other hand, forging and casting processes involve many types of equipment. So, when calculating the carbon footprint for the processes such as forging or casting, so we will just consider the process flow or the progression of the overall process. But machining segregated different components of machining could be easily calculated and most of the components, most of the products that you see are manufactured by cutting itself that is machining. So, we will focus upon machining then we will move to the casting and forging as a small part in this lecture. So, this slide is focusing on the boundary that is boundary between the part and the product. So, next slide I will try to talk about the equipment energy consumption. In equipment energy consumption, we have carbon emissions E that is carbon emissions due to energy consumption for a single process. Here C E E is equal to carbon emission from energy consumption of a single process. So, this is equal to the energy consumption simple into its carbon emission factor. So, here E C E you know is the energy consumption from equipment as here I am predominantly talking about the equipment energy in this slide and C E F E is energy and my energy is electric energy. So, this is carbon emission factor for electric energy. And this is in general 0 0.5810 kilograms of carbon dioxide per kilowatt hours. This is from the reference by He et al. 2023 and from the journal of cleaner production. So, I will put the values from this reference only. When I will try to first focus upon machining equipment that is single process energy consumption, there are two methods. First method is the theoretical method. theoretical calculations, this is one model. Second model is the specific energy consumption. Theoretical model means uh, the rotation of the spindle, the acceleration, the acceleration of the spindle, complicated energy consumption law is there. So, there are uh, uh, machining processes that no load condition is there, load condition is there. I showed you the power curve in the previous lectures when the system is off and the standby mode is there, then the machining mode is there, all those systems are there in theoretical part. Specific energy consumption is when theoretical energy calculation is not directly 
possible or you wish to find a solution that only takes about the prediction of energy that is specific energy consumption of machine tools cutting operations. The total energy consumption of cutting state can be calculated here where overall total energy is calculated for a specific parts specific processes it is sometimes not calculated. So, specific energy consumption is based upon the material removal rate, it is based upon the cutting volume or other parameters or so. So, there are differences I will keep this slide this portion vacant so that uh, later I come to the differences between them. Let me first try to jot down the theoretical calculations for the machining equipment that is single process energy consumption. So, here again in the equipment energy and regarding machining we have energy consumption during the processing time of machine tool or equipment is equal to energy consumption nt plus energy consumption ct. So, where nt is no load period and ct is the cutting period. So, when I say no load period, so this becomes the energy consumption that is power for the no load period for the ith cutting period and this is summation of the power first we take for the complete time from 0 to t idle. And when this is calculated with respect to time, the integral because this is a continuous process, if you recall there were power curves with what the continuous processes and uh, those continuous processes the integral could be taken. When the data is discrete, in the discrete data we take summation and for the different processes we will get a discrete data. So, here integral comes because if you recall the power curves were sub something like this, we raise up and we come down something like that. So, it is a continuous energy consumption during one operation that is when drilling is happening, when milling some component cutting is happening that is a continuous process. So, that is an integral from 0 to the time uh, when the no load is there, but still some motor, some component, some of the lubrication system, cutting fluid system those are still running. So, those are sometimes running or sometimes cutting fluid is also not being sprayed, but other components of the machine I will show you which components are running in a video in a laboratory demonstration. This is a continuous period single operation and adding all the operations becomes one process and then those operations are separately added that is a discrete data. Discrete data is to be added using a summation or oh, this is summation from i is equal to 1 to n, n for the no load. Similarly, I have a relation for the cutting period that is power for the cutting period for the ith period and this is integrated from 0 to the cutting time for the ith period with respect to time that is dt and again summation of this the time varies from 1 to n for the cutting period. So, what are these terms? Let me try to put it here. ECE you already know is our energy consumption for equipment that is put in the last slide already. So, now I have EC and T this is my energy consumption during no load period 
and E C C T is my energy consumption during cutting period. Similarly, the way we have n, n is the number of low load periods that comes for n n t for n c t these are number of no load periods and this is number of cutting periods. Then comes the time t time for the ith no low period that is when it is idle that is for the ith no low period I will call it duration duration of the ith no load period. Similarly, T cutting for the ith period is duration of the ith cutting period. Then we have the powers P and T and P C T that is P for the no load period power that is the ith no load period this is real time power during ith no load period. Similarly, for the cutting period it is P C T I this is real time power during the ith cutting period. I will show you the different power consumption patterns and what is P and T and P C T let us try to see that first and then I will show you a figure that how the power flows and then we will go to the laboratory to understand that better that how the power of the spindle and other components is distributed. So, we have P and T that is the no load period and P C T that is the cutting period. Power during the no load period is the sum of the three parts that is power S P S which is standby power P C A which is machining auxiliary system power and P N which is the no load power drive of the system. Then P cutting is this power that is P and T no load power, but plus its own cutting period. Cutting period is that is the power for cutting plus the power of the extra load that is there. That means P C T becomes power for standby plus power for the auxiliary system plus power for the no load system, no load drive system plus power for cutting actual cutting and some extra load that is there during cutting. So, here I will put all the abbreviations here. So, here P S is standby power or basic auxiliary system power. basic system you call it or you call it basic auxiliary systems. P C A is the power for machining auxiliary system. Then P n is the power for the no load drive system. We are talking about power and 
P C is the cutting power and when we are cutting there is some extra load applied. So, that is extra load power or you call it the extra load loss power and when we are talking about the cutting power it is the tip cutting power. So, to put that in a more clear way when the power is being added from the very uh, 0 period, 0 period when the machine is not even started to the point when machine is just switched on, then we try to rotate the spindle and then we try to do actual cutting. So, to keep on adding it over it, so uh, it is a similar to what we did in the power curves. So, let me try to put down here, I have only standby power here. So, here what we have in the standby systems, I have standby power here in which we have the numerical control system. We have the frequency converter we have server of the CNC machine or of the computer that is giving input to the machine. Then we have lights that is illuminator, or display, or maybe lubrication system, or any such auxiliary system. What is the basic auxiliary systems? This is my standby power, which is P. S standby. On the top of it, I will now switch on the machine. From here, I will switch on the machine. So, here it is only standby power. I will just draw this line and I will switch on my machine here. Then comes the machining auxiliary power system. where we have power C A that is auxiliary in which we have the cooling system and this is for a smaller period. Only the machine is majorly running at a standby mode when the setup is being made. When the machining actually has to happen, cutting out actually has to happen just a few seconds before the spindle has to be started rotating, the homing of the machine is there, then only these systems comes into play that is the cooling system, the tool exchange system that is there is a turret of the tool when the tool exchange is happening and the cutting fluid is also running that system is also running that comes in the machining auxiliary power system PCA which power is higher or it is added to the power that is a standby power. Then also we have the mist separator. It is if the mist flow is there, then hydraulic systems, so this is uh, then tool exchange system when you say, we also say the work table, if suppose small setup is to be made for the system to run. So, these all come as a power, as an auxiliary power which is for a machine that is still under no load. No load means actual cutting has not yet started. On the top of it, I will draw a small separator here and I will add no load power of drive. No load power of drive system which I have denoted here as P n. Here we have majorly the spindle when it has started rotating and this is only a few seconds before the machine actually starts cutting 
and the feed dry system. So, this work table etcetera majorly comes here as well feed drive till this point there is no load I will put it here till this point the system is in standby from 0 it is standby period and from the standby period till this point still we do not have any load that is from the base 0 it is still no load and from here I will go up till the point when the cutting has actually started maybe till this point from 0 I will draw a dimension that is the quantum of power which is time or the power during cutting I will put it as cutting period. So, what is left now cutting has not yet started now finally, we will have a cutting system here that is we have two parts in a cutting system one is the actual cutting which is the last power when actual cutting is happening I will put it as cutting power which is P C. When actual cutting is happening there is always some extra load because cutting might happen for some time cutting might happen for a continuously at a larger power rate for example, it is 1 mm 2 mm 3 mm of the holes to which you have to do the depth of the cut is for lesser or larger there is always loss of power and that loss of power is here compensated while putting a parameter that is known as P e which is the extra load loss power. So, this is making you clear the how the standby period, no load period, a cutting period powers are there and this is again associated with the power curves that we drew in the last lectures where it was something like this. if you recall it was time t 1 t 2 3 3 t 4 t 5 and so on we have different times and it was here only the uh, motor was off that is this was standby this was till this point it was no load. and from here till the end point it is cutting this is our power curve this I will show you in a demonstration in a laboratory let us come to the laboratory that is imaginary lab at IIT Kanpur where well, I will take you to a CNC setup and we will see how the system when it is standby the light is there the uh, auxiliary systems the basic auxiliary systems are there display is there numerical control system is there that is running and at no low period as well when the cutting is not happening still system is consuming power. So, let us try to see that in lab and after that we will close the lecture. Welcome to the laboratory setup we are in the course carbon accounting and sustainable designs in product life cycle management and I am trying to demonstrate to you how the power consumption in the machining varies depending upon the different parts of the machine when they are switched on or switched off and when the actual machining process is there. I showed you the time variability uh, the way when the uh, motor was off motor was on then the processing time pre processing time I showed you in the previous weeks. So, we are discussing the carbon emissions based upon the energy consumption in machining 
and in machining carbon emissions are proportional to the energy consumption and how is energy consumption there in a single process. So, this is a typical CNC machine which is an MCO concept mill 105. This is a 4 axis CNC milling machine in which you can see this setup here. This is our whole machining setup. We have workpiece already set on or it is held on the table here and this is a turret in which different tools are there. This is a drill, this is a milling machine and there are lights which are on. So, we have different setups here. So, this machine is as of now in a standby mode. You can still have some sound coming. That is some motor is there that is there at the back end which is still running. That is we have the lubrication system which is switched on. We have uh, the display system that is also there. This is a monitoring system or the control panel here. We have a display system there on the computer that is switched on. So, even when the machine is not running, nothing is happening, nothing productive is there, but still energy consumption is there. We have the server of the system there. At the back, we have uh, the coolant system, the server that is also switched on, frequency converter, numerical control system, all of them are working in a standby mode itself. So, when we shut the door of the machine, now machine will work in this mode itself because it is saw the safety of the operator who is working on the machine. The machine would not work unless the door is shut and now the coolant system could be switched on. It would be switched on when the machine would run and I would run the machine in two, three modes. That is first I will lose one small uh, milling operation with one mm of depth. Then with two mm of depth, then I will try to do a taper from one to two mm. How do we go about? You will see the difference in the sounds, the sound intensity that is sound if it is like mm, 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 this different sounds is giving me the power or the load that is there taken by the motor. This is proportional to the energy consumption. Now, this is the section uh, level of the power consumption pre-processing when this is a coolant system. This blue pipe that you could see is a coolant system that has now started delivering the coolant that is now switched on. Now, you can see the sound is coming little high. So, this is the second level when the energy PCA is there. That is the power of the auxiliary system that is now have uh, started operating. So, your hydraulic system has started operating, the mist system will start operating, the exchanging knives, cooling system that will start operating. Those all would start working here. Then we will come to the actual process when actual machining happens, what is the power consumption. And similarly, I will also show you now after the machining, after the laboratory demonstration here, the uh, curve that how the power consumption goes. So, let us now try to run the machine. So, now uh, let us let me show you some sounds of the auxiliary systems. Now, machine though it is in a standby mode, I will move the table now. Now, this table is being moved. Is it operator who is moving the table? You see the sound. This is turret is being moved, table is moved. Each of them is having associated sound for the turret. This is a sound of the motors which are controlling them. This is also an energy consumption. So, which comes into machining auxiliary system power that is PCA that we call this. Now, let me rotate the tool to tool spindle. This, this is slow speed rotating, less energy consumption, little lesser like le let me now increase the speed at little higher speed or maybe much higher speed. The rotation speed you will uh, observe and you will also observe the sound coming here that will be heavier that is high energy consumption. This is high energy consumption. Now, the RPM of the machine is 1200 here. So, this is sound coming. So, these are all the systems which are one coming but still the cutting period is not there. That is we are still in a period when spindle drive system is working. This is table is my feed drive system from x in x and y direction. Z direction is the turret only in Z up and down. This is all feed system that is also working. So, this is my no load power of drive system. Now, let me start cutting. In cutting, there will be cutting power that is tip cutting power PC and we will also have extra load loss power because extra load is going to be applying for cutting. We will also see how does that happen. Yes, the cutting it is coming down. This is a and ball mill cutter and the workpiece is acrylic. As I also told, based upon the workpiece type, the carbon emission from material is accordingly. So, this is acrylic, transparent acrylic plate of 20 mm thickness.
this is just a drilling this is now processing it is cutting is happening this is now very hard material it is high speed steel tool is cutting my very soft material that is acrylic that is why uh, uh, very heavy sound is not coming had it been mild steel the sound would be high for cutting it is moving in the other direction y direction here now the cutting speed is there. it is now little uh, uh, the depth is not very heavy the depth would be around maybe 2 mm 3 mm maximum so let me now increase the depth more depth then we will do cutting so that the sound comes depth now you see the sound is coming if i increase the feed rate here the table feed the more sound would come and this is a coolant system coolant system has to be there in the machining part itself so now i have put the coolant system i, I did not put the coolant system because i wish you to see this scrap how the scrap is coming out because coolant will also flush off the scrap now so this is cutting fluid that is being applied cutting fluid or coolant whatever we call it and this is also uh, cleaning of the scrap but now the machining is still happening now the machining is going you, you see the sound you hear the sound the machining is happening in this direction but this is now actual cutting that is happening in the machining so this is acrylic material that is why the sound is not that heavy and the coolant has two purposes one is to splash off or to clean off the scrap that is the chips and number two second point is uh, the cooling cooling of the system so that the internal or residual stresses are not developed much when we are machining something this is how cutting is happening All right now we can stop the machine you will again see when we stop the machining the tool will come up now we have stopped the machining the spindle is stopped but still the initial standby system is still running you can see the light is switched on the illuminator is there the server is there the display is also on the frequency converter numerical control system all of them are running at the back end lubrication of the machining is there so some of the systems in standby is still running and now comes the setup cost separate setup cost or setup energy when we are changing the work piece or we are changing the tool here the tool change in the turret itself in automatic system in the turret itself one tool is there second tool could come it can keep changing the different kinds of the tools and this can hold up to 10 tools i can show you how the turret rotates there how we change the tool so this is our setup tool could be changed and to change the plate that is the work piece we have to again open the door the change has to happen but still machine would be running in standby in standby also energy would be there this is turret second tool third tool it doesn't have any tool at point number seven so i'll now come to point number it was previously using tool number six it has come to tool eight tool nine tool uh, has to be little clean so you can see the metal scrap there at tool nine so each evening the machine is cleaned so when this tool nine was used in the morning so you can see the scrap that was a metal scrap so that was being used so these are all systems in a single process single process or in a machining system which consume energy and energy consumption varies according to the power consumption levels that is when the machine is actually in process or the machine is waiting for the work piece to be changed for the tool to be changed still energy consumption is there this is for a single process for from this process process one process two process three adding to uh, make it a production line then this makes it a total product energy consumption and proportional carbon emission and this overall products whatever parts are there taking them all together makes our facility energy consumption and a proportional carbon emission accordingly and then there is distribution then there are auxiliary system then there are uh, transfer to the wholesaler or so all those parts are there in the carbon accounting so let me move to the uh, quantitative models which i am discussing to quantify this energy to find the carbon emissions based upon the energy used at different levels of the machining so this was a laboratory demonstration where i demonstrated how the power consumption varies 
based upon the sound of the system where it is was running the mode number of motors which were there and uh, the power consumption in a way it is there in this illustration when the cutting power is the highest power which is having no load period standby period in it and final cutting is happening here the cutting power from this point to this point that is final cutting that is happening. I will take this further in the next part of the lecture series on the carbon accounting model. We will try to discuss in the theoretical modeling of the equipment in the machining. Then I will go to the specific energy model. Then we will talk about further about material consumption, about waste treatment and other carbon emission systems. Thank you.